In this video, we will discuss about how to invalidate a JSON Web Token in our backend application, or we can also say how to log out from our backend application. Before starting the video, if you want to check out the written version of this tutorial, you can go to the first link in the description section where you can also find the source code for this project. As you are aware, we are using JSON Web Tokens for the authentication mechanism and the main advantage of using these tokens are they are stateless and easy for the server to identify whether is a request coming from a valid user or not. So this, may, so this behavior makes implementing a perfect logout solution for the JSON Web Token based authentication scheme in the backend application very tricky and also difficult. Having said that, there are four possible ways we can uh, implement the JSON Web Token invalidation mechanism. So the first one is to obviously delete the token from the client's browser. So this is for sure a must when we have to implement the login, but there is a possibility that a hacker may have already access to the JSON Web Token and uh, this, and that is the reason we have to find a solution to invalidate the token also on our backend. Which brings us to our second point, which is to introduce an expiration time for our tokens and make them as short lived as possible. So ideally we have to give an expiration time of 10 to 15 minutes for our JSON web tokens. And uh, here I will be using the terms the JSON web token and the access token interchangeably from now on. So, but the downside here, so as I was saying before, but the downside here is once the tokens are expired, we have to ask the user to log in again, which is, uh, a terrible user experience so we can be sure that this solution is bad the third solution is to introduce a concept called as refresh tokens which builds on our point number two but the idea is to provide the user an additional token called as refresh token at the time of authentication so we use this refresh token to generate a new access token whenever the access token is expired or about to be expired so in this way we can keep on rotating the access tokens and uh, when the user logs out we can just delete this reference we can just delete this reference token the last solution is uh, when the user wants to log out we just store the token inside a database and uh, once we have done that we check each token each request and check whether this request and check whether this token is inside the database or not so if this if it is part of the, if it is inside the database then we throw an error because this token is not is not valid anymore and uh, as I said before, this solution defeats the purpose of using a JSON Web Token because we're using a state and we are doing a database lookup for every request. So even though instead of using a relational database, if we use an in-memory database like Redis, we can hugely info improve. We can hugely improve the performance of this uh, particular solution. So of ideally, I guess a combination of point three and four. Uh, would be the better solution in other use cases but in our use case uh, we will just go with the third solution and we'll see how to implement this refresh token mechanism in our application the first step here is to introduce ex expiration time for our access tokens to do that i am going to open the jwt provider class and inside this class i am going to inject a value from the properties file called jwt.expiration.time let me also add this so I also added this property inside our application.properties file with the same name as a key and the value as 900,000. So now we have to change the generate token method to include this uh, expiration token. So I can do that by adding a new method called set expiration. And uh, this method takes in a date object as input. So for that, as we have a long, uh, we can use the instant.now.plusmillis object plus millis method call to convert this long to an instant object and from there we can use the date.from method to convert this instant to a date object. And let's also add a getter method for this expiration time as we will use this method soon. Let's open authentication response class and here we will add two new fields. The first one is of type string and it's called as refresh token. And the second one is an expiration date, which is of type instant. Now let's open authentication service and inside the login method, we will enhance the response we are sending back from the method. So I'm going to add the expiration date to the response by first getting the expiration time in milliseconds from the JWT provider class. And from there, I'm going to 
calculate an instant from the time step by using the instant dot now plus milliseconds method. And for now we can just pass in the refresh token as empty string. And so if you try to perform login, so what we will get is one JSON web token, one, one refresh token which is empty and an expiration date. Now next step is to implement the refresh tokens part. First I am going to add a post mapping inside the auth controller class which takes a request mapping value as refresh slash token and this method is taking request body of type refresh token request. This is a new class I have already created and this class contains only one field called refresh token and this field is annotated with not blank annotation and if we add at valid annotation before the request body uh, Spring will automatically throw an error if we pass in an empty or null value as a refresh token. I did not implement this validations anywhere else in our application but in a real world application we use this validation mechanism very frequently. So now inside this method I am going to add a method call to refresh token inside the auth service class and uh, let's create this method. So before, so before doing any more implementation let's leave this aside and create a class with name refresh token service. This class will be responsible to create, delete and validate the refresh tokens. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add in a method called as generate refresh token. And here I'm going to create an object for refresh token. And uh, this refresh token is, uh, so, we, so we are going to store this refresh token inside the database. If you go inside this class, you can see that we have the usual data entity and all logs constructors, the, log, the Lombok and the JPA annotations. And the first field here is the ID and followed by the token and the created date. So we also have a repository created for this refresh token which is similar to all the repository we have. So inside the refresh token service I am going to create a new object for the refresh token and uh, set the token. So for the token, the value would be UUID dot random UUID. So this will, so this will create a 128 bit unique random UUID. And uh, I'm going to convert this UUID to a string, and we will use this as our refresh token. And for the created date, I'm going to pass in the present uh, time by using the instant dot now method. And after that, I'm going to save the token by just using the save method of the refresh token repository. And the next method is the validate refresh token. So this method is just takes the token as a value. This method just takes the token as input. And, and we are just going to look up for this token using the find by token method. And as this method returns us an optional, we are going to use the or else throw method to throw a spring reddit exception saying that this is an invalid refresh token. The next one is a delete refresh token method. So this is just uh, the normal delete method. So we are just calling the delete by token method inside the refresh token repository by passing in the by passing in the token. So if the token is not there inside the database, spring automatically throws an illegal argument exception in this case. Now I'm going back to the refresh token method inside the auth service class and here let's inject the refresh token service and down here inside the refresh token method first I'm going to make a method call to validate the incoming refresh token. If the token is invalid then there will be a runtime exception and if not the execution goes on to the next step which is to generate new token. We can use the generate token method inside the JWT provider class but if the JWT is already expired, then there will be no user information inside the security context. And as we need subject while creating the token, which is the username, we can just create another method called generate token with username. And inside this method, I'm going to pass in the username, which is coming from the refresh token request as uh, the subject. So let's call this generate token with username method from our refresh token method. And let's store the return value as string variable called token. Now I'm going to construct authentication response object using the builder method. We have our newly generated token, the refresh token, which is coming in already from the request, the expiration date of this new token and the username. Let's go back to auth controller class. 
we do not see any errors inside the refresh token methods that's good and now let's go ahead and create our last method called logout which also has a post mapping annotation and here we are going to receive again the refresh token request as request body from this object we can retrieve the refresh token and we can call the delete refresh and we can call the delete refresh token method inside the refresh token service to make this work let's inject the refresh token service class inside the auth controller and lastly we can return a response entity with status ok and body as refresh token deleted successfully okay so a quick correction inside the login method of our auth service class so here in the authentication response we are sending an empty string as the refresh token so instead of that we will be sending the generated refresh token by calling refresh token service dot generate refresh token so this will return us the string and uh, we will pass this to the authentication response okay so that's it we have covered all the points to implement refresh token mechanism in our application let's start the application and test it So we came to the end of the video and also the end of the backend tutorial uh, for this Reddit clone application. From the next video, we will start working on the front-end application using Anglo 9. And I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy coding techies and please don't forget to share and like this video and also subscribe to the channel.